Ready? I'm asking you. Yeah, you're good. Yeah, I got it. Oh, I need to see you nod. <laughs> Let me see you nod. There you go. Okay, that's a good nod. Good morning, and morning. welcome to Christ Lutheran Church, the parking lot at 2011 Brandon Avenue. Give me a honk. Come on, Chris. Let me hear it. Good, good, Chris. Very good. Very good. Good to have you worshiping with us this on Palm Sunday. A few announcements to share with you. You're all invited to join us on uh, Monday morning for Bible study in the fellowship hall or on Zoom. And women's Bible study will resume after Easter on Monday nights. For our rehearsal, reminder that we rehearse Wednesday in the fellowship hall at 7.30. So our Holy Week services uh, after today, on Monday, Thursday, that's not Monday, Thursday, that's Monday. Monday means commandment. We worship um, in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. with communion, and that will also be on Facebook Live. Good Friday uh, at 3 p.m., we gather in, at the corner here with our ecumenical sisters and brothers, and we walk down Brandon Avenue, Brandon Avenue uh, with the Way of the Cross, following the 14 stations of the cross. It's an ecumenical service with our siblings in Christ, and we invite you to be here at 3. At 7 p.m. on Good Friday, in the sanctuary, we will uh, have the tenebrae service of light into darkness. And then on Easter Sunday, we give you three opportunities to worship, and everyone will be a little different. The first is with our siblings in Christ at Evergreen Cemetery, all the churches here on Grandin Road. We'll be worshiping together at an um, outdoor sunrise service at Evergreen Cemetery at 6.30. Then at 9 o'clock here in the parking lot, our Easter celebration will be held as well as being online. And then on 10.30 in the worshiping in the sanctuary, and we invite you to be a part of that. Other announcements will be found in, on our uh, website and in your bulletin. So let us begin now, and uh, for those of you gathered here today, including those in your car, we invite you to join us down here for the beginning of the worship service and for the procession, processional gospel, and then we will sing as we process, and since this is uh, all on TV these days, and we're going to keep the procession tight. We're going to go around the median strip as many times as we need to to sing the hymn. So, Kim, uh, don't, don't, don't make it long. We're out here in the cold. All right. So let us begin, then, with the acclamation, and then I'll read the gospel, and then we'll begin the procession. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Those who in the highest. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After he had said this, Jesus went on ahead going into Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethany, at Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you why are you untying it, just say this. The Lord needs it. So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the cloak, the colt, the owners asked him, so Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus and spreading their cloaks on the road. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives. The whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that he had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, 
the stones would shout out the gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord Christ. Christ. Let's all gather down here. Come on, gather down here as we begin the procession. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We praise you, O God, for redeeming the world through your, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Today, he entered the holy city in triumph and was proclaimed Messiah and King by those who spread garments and branches along his way. Bless these branches and those who carry them. Grant us grace to follow our Lord in the way of the cross so that joined to his death and resurrection, we enter into life with you through the same Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And God be with you. Let us pray. As we enter into the contemplation of the passion of our Lord Jesus Christ and meditate on the salvation of the world through his suffering, death, burial, and resurrection, we pray, O oh God of mercy and love, in the mystery of the passion of your Son, you offer your infinite life to the world. Gather us around the cross of Christ and preserve us until the resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited. But he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, in heaven and on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading of the Passion of our Lord according to St. Luke. When the hour came, Jesus took his place at the table and the apostles with him. He said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took a cup. And after giving thanks, he said, take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them saying, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after supper, saying, This cup is poured out for you, is the covenant in my blood. But see, the one who betrays me is with me, and his hand is on the table. For the Son of Man is going as it has been determined, but woe to that one by whom he is betrayed. Then they began to ask one another, Which one of them it could be who would do this? But he said to them, the kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are called benefactors. But not so with you. Rather, the greatest among you must become like the youngest, and the leader like the one who serves. For who is greater, the one who is at the table, or the one who serves? Is it not the one at the table? But I am among you as one who serves. You are those who have stood 
by me in my trials, and I confer on you, just as my Father has conferred on me a kingdom, so that you may eat and drink at my table in my kingdom, and you will sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Simon, Simon, listen. Satan has demanded to sift all of you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your own faith may not fail. And you, when once you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. And he said to him, Lord, I am ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus said, I tell you, Peter, the cock will not crow, the cock will not crow this day until you have denied three times that you know me. He said to them, when I sent you out without a purse, bag, or sandals, did you lack anything? They said, no, not a thing. He said to them, but now the one who has a purse must take it and likewise a bag, and the one who has no sword must sell his cloak and buy one. For I tell you, this scripture must be fulfilled in me. And he was accounted among the lawless. And indeed, what is written about me is being fulfilled. They said, Lord, look, here are two swords. He replied, it is enough. to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Then he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, knelt down, and prayed. Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Then an angel from heaven appeared to him and gave him strength. In his anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down on the ground. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? And then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his ear. But Jesus answered, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you day after day in your temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. following at a distance. 
When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You are also one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then about an hour later, still another kept insisting, Surely this man was also with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. blindfold him and kept asking him, prophesy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. When day came, the assembly of the elders of the people, both chief priests and scribes, gathered together and they brought him to their council. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us. He replied, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I question you, you will not answer. But from now on, the Son of Man will be seated at the right hand of power of God. All of them asked, Are you then the Son of God? He said to them, You say that I am. And then they said, What further testimony do we need? We have heard it ourselves from his own lips. Then the assembly rose as a body and brought Jesus before Pilate. They began to accuse him, saying, We found this man perverting our nation, forbidding us to pay taxes to the emperor, and saying that he himself is the Messiah, a king. Then Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? He answered, You say so. Then Pilate said to the chief priests and the crowds, I find no basis for an accusation against this man. But they were insistent and said, He stirs up the people by teaching throughout all Judea from Galilee, where he began even to this place. When Pilate heard this, he asked whether the man was a Galilean. And when he learned that he was under Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him off to Herod, who was himself in Jerusalem at that time. When Herod saw Jesus, he was very glad, for he had been wanting to see him for a long time, because he had heard about him and was hoping to see him perform some sign. He questioned him at some length, but Jesus gave him no answer. The chief priests and the scribes stood by vehemently accusing him. Even Herod with his soldiers treated him with contempt and mocked him. Then he put an elegant robe on him and sent him back to Pilate. That same day, Herod and Pilate became friends with each other. Before this, they had been enemies.
then called together the chief priests, the leaders, and the people, and said to them, You brought me this man as one who was perverting the people, and here I have examined him in your presence, and have not found this man guilty of any of your charges against him. Neither has Herod, for he sent him back to us. Indeed, he has done nothing to deserve death. I will therefore have him flogged and release him. Then they all shouted together, Away with this fellow! Release Barabbas for us! This was a man who had been put in prison for an insurrection that had taken place in the city and for murder. Pilate, wanting to release Jesus, addressed them again, but they kept shouting, Crucify him! Crucify him! The third time he said to them, Why? What evil has he done? I have found in him no ground for the sentence of death. I will therefore have him flogged and then release him. But they kept urgently demanding with loud shouts that he should be crucified, and their voices prevailed. So Pilate gave his verdict that their demand should be granted. He released the man they asked for, the one who had been put in prison for insurrection and murder, and he handed Jesus over as they wished. Jesus turned to them and said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For the days are surely coming when they will say, Blessed are the barren and the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, Cover us. For if they do this when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Two others also, who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the Skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing, and the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. This is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him, saying, Do you not fear God, since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly, for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Then Jesus, crying with a loud voice, said, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Having said this, he breathed his last. When the centurion saw what had taken place, he praised God and said, Certainly this man was innocent. 
And when all the crowds who had gathered there for this spectacle saw what had taken place, they returned home, beating their breasts. But all his acquaintances, including the women who had followed him from Galilee, stood at a distance, watching these things. and the Sabbath was beginning. The women who had come with him from Galilee followed, and they saw the tomb and how his body was laid. Then they returned and prepared spices and ointments. On the Sabbath they rested, according to the commandment. Drawn close to the heart of God, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church called to follow Jesus in the way of the cross. Make us unflinching servants of the gospel. Deliver us from hardship as we confront the forces of injustice and practice radical compassion. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For the earth and all its inhabitants, created in love, train us to recognize your divine goodness in the world around us. Rouse in us a reverence for creation. We take greater care of its resources. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For those in positions of authority called to lead with integrity and compassion, supply them with courage and vulnerability when challenged with new ideas. Deliver them from fear that limits imagination and impedes justice. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer, waiting ex expectantly for mercy and consolation, accompany those who feel abandoned or betrayed, defend those who are wrongly accused, and embrace those who are incarcerated or det detained. Heal those who are ill, especially Mildred, Bob, John, Pam, Russell, Jerry, Chris, and Whitney. Strengthen Jean and Lynn and Stetson, Hunter, Carol, and Baby Thatcher. Be with Angie and Glenn in their recovery. Be with Tom and Tim, Wanda's sister, Claire and Ryan, Danny and Cecil. And be with the families of John and Jim, Ray, and Pat. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Be with the people of Ukraine and all those who suffer in the midst of conflict and war. Bring peace to the nations, O Lord. Bring your love and healing to the people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. For Christians around the world preparing this week to journey with Jesus to the cross, reveal to us once again the earth-shaking power of humble service, unmerited forgiveness, and sacrificial love. 
lead us all from death to life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We remember those who have died, those who we commit into your hands. Remember us when you come into your kingdom and prepare a place for each of us with you in paradise. Merciful God, receive our prayers. Accept the prayers we bring, O oh God, on behalf of a world in need for the sake of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us share with one another a sign of his peace. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. <coughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, mighty, and merciful Lord, we praise and bless you for heaven and earth are full of your glory. In great love you sent to us Jesus, your Son, who reached out to heal the sick and suffering who preached good news to the poor, and who on the cross opened his arms to all. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection and ascension, we await his coming in glory. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of all who share this heavenly food, the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus draws the whole world to himself. Receive this meal and be nourished in love. Thanks be to God. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his love and grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, in this rich meal of grace, you have fed us with your body, the bread of life. Now send us forth to bear your life-giving hope to a world in need. Amen. Amen. You are children of God, anointed with the oil of gladness and strengthened for the journey. Almighty God, motherly, majestic, and mighty, bless you this day and always. Amen. Amen.